Okay, well, uh, first two things regarding the last uh, task that you send, I mean, task number 13, that uh, uh, we saw the performance for the <clears throat> DC motors. Some of you forget to solve the total question regarding the analog reading. If you should take care of that and um, have more attention to example number seven, please don't uh, forget to review that. And one more thing, again, please, if I tell you the problem for the task, please solve it for yourself. Don't resend it because we cannot again see the student task. We have uh 125 or 135 students that all the time i will see your task and send you one by one the feedback uh, please uh solve it and uh just be careful that if this question comes in, into the exam you should be able to solve it okay Today talk is regarding the stepper motor initially i decided to finish everything today but uh, when I sort the data, I thought that let us do this important actuator uh, complete and uh, do most of the needful part just in this lecture and next lecture. Then we have a stepper motor for today as well as Monday. I don't think that we need some extra lecture on next week. And hopefully we can finish our lecture series on coming week on Friday. And uh, after that, we will follow the school policy and uh, to see what will happen. Then our lecture 20 is regarding SFM motor. Don't forget to send yesterday task and today task uh, for me before the Monday. Okay. Stepper motor people, they call it step motor or a stepping motor. They are one type of the brushless DC motors that divides the full rotation into the number of equal steps. If you remember, when we talk regarding the DC motor, I tell you that it's difficult for the DC motor to have the accurate position. Then yesterday we learned the servo motor, which somehow we have some degree of movement, which is more accurate. But if you want 100% uh, or more degree of, uh, um, of uh, movement, Maybe the stepper motor is also another good choice, which can, uh, this motor can position, uh, then be commanded to move and hold at one of these steps without any position sensors for feedback. Means that different, one more different between the stepper motor and uh, the servo motor could be the this feedback. That already yesterday we talked that we have this feedback in the form of closed loop and in that uh, for the servo motor you can control that are you really in suppose 10 degree or 20 degree but for stepper motor it's in open loop but that's also is uh, a great based on the construction of the dc motors and um something that you should remember for this motor is torque and speed. Uh, again, for today lecture, I will try to give you some information which is related to electronic and mechanical parts, or somehow for electrical engineering, the student will read it. But if you want to do the better coding for this motor, you should have this primary knowledge that I think it's important for you to know. Uh, anyway, let us continue that the stepper motor uh, make the electromechanical uh, world go round, 
with higher torque, but unlike the regular DC motor uh, counterparts, controlling the stepper motor takes a bit more than a current across the um, motor two wire. Uh, what we mean that maybe the main difference between the servo motor and control uh, and stepper motor is the amount of the torque that you can put on the motor and your motor can suffer and handle this uh, type of job. A stepper motor, uh, we can say somehow if we categorize them somewhere between the regular DC motor and it's between the servo motor. because. As the type of the consumption voltage, it's DC motor, but as the type of, uh, as the um, concerning, the controlling part of the motor, this is servo motor. Then we can call, this is on the border of DC as well as servo. And they have the advantage that they can be positioned accurately, move forward and backward one step at a time but they can uh, also rotate continuously. Uh, anyway, we have something that you should remember that maybe the speed of movement in this motor is not that much uh, fast, but it's very useful and it's used in various applications. Suppose if we want uh, to see, we can find a variety of the application from 3D printer, which is more demands nowadays, or CNC machines, to your DVD drives that currently your laptop is using and heating dots and even analog clocks will using. If I want to list some application for this motor, 3D printing equipment, textile machine, printing presses, uh, presses uh, gaming uh, machines, and medical imaging uh, machinery, something like MRI, some, some something like uh, uh, X-ray nowadays. A small robots, CNC mining uh, machines and welding equipments are the parts that you can see the application. But which type of, for this motor we have is the next topic that I want to tell you. Generally, we have two types for these motors, uh, which they are more important, we call it bipolar and unipolar, but there are two more categorization that we call it universal and variable reluctance. Uh, here we're just talking regarding the bipolar and unipolar, but um, for others also you can find much more things on the net grid. At one glance, uh, the maybe the main difference between these two motors is the number of wire that you can see between bipolar and unipolar, and we are going to speak regarding that. Bipolar motors usually have four wires and are stronger than uh, size, the same size of unipolar motor. But since we only have one coil per phase, we will uh, need to reverse the current through the coil in order uh, to step. Uh, or need to reverse the current we mean that we will no longer be able to directly drive the coil with a single transistor, but instead uh, with the full edge bridge circuit we need, we can do, and building the proper edge bridge uh, tedious, uh, let alone two, which is why we will be using the dedicated bipolar uh, motor driver. Um, more if you want to talk regarding the bipolar uh, stepper motor, we can say that these motors are consist of uh, two coil of wire electrically and actually split it into the uh, several physical coils and generally have four connections, two per coil. Uh, some simplified diagram I show you here that you can have a look and you will you can see this circle shape as the shaft or as the core of the motors uh, which represented here in this figure this type of motor have some advantage like that they can make use of entire cold winding so they are more efficient 
and they require the more complex controller or driver to operate as to reverse direction the polarity of the voltage applied to the coils which need to be reversed. The next category of the stepper motors are unipolar stepper motor, which in them um, they have two coils electrically, but each coil has a center tap that is divided up to two sections. So there are three connections on each coil. And the other way, if, if we say that two multiplied by two, we have the six point, as even I show you here in the figure. And this result will give us the six connection. However, many unipolar stepper motors have only five connection as the two sensor tap are internally connected. Mm. In this type of motor, uh, only half of each coil will use odd term, and in most configuration, positive voltage is applied to the center tap and left here, and a negative voltage is then applied to one side of the coil to attract the motor shaft, and uh, which shows in the figure. More if I want to tell you regarding these unipolar motors, and you can see some figure regarding the how many leads or how many wires I have, eight, five, and six. You will see that these motors uh, have five, six, and eight leads, which extending from the base onto the coil per phase. And in the case of five wire, the fifth wire is joined the center tap. And for six wire one, the coil uh, pair each have their own center tab and in a motor with eight wire each coil pair is completely separated from the other allowing it to be wired in different com configuration this extra wire allow unipolar motors to be driven directly by an external controller with simple transistor to drive each coil individually and um, something that we should remember for a stepper motor, people will call it firing pattern or sequence to select the wire, is that in each coil is drive the determination which direction the shaft of the motor will rotate. And unfortunately, given the only one coil is energized at the time, the holding torque of this unipolar motor will always be less than of the bipolar motor of the same size. Then bypassing the center taps of unipolar motors, it can now be driven as the bipolar motors, but will require a more complicated control scheme. As I tell you, these are some electromechanical parts that we should have some background. I'm not expected that you know all these parts, but I want that you will be aware that this theory is available. Let us see the six wire unipolar example. As you will see, we have the rotating coil and we have one, two, three, four, five uh, coils which are uh, mounted the center and whenever it will move you will see that the center tab and act of each coil means that coil number one coil number two coil number three and coil number five so we they will blink in the figure this movement if you see we have the clock plugs but somehow you need counterclockwise movement that we should think then if we refer <coughs> to this diagram we will see that the resistance between coil and a and coil b is double the resistance between coil a to center tab one and also the resistance between coil um, and b uh, coil and b and coil and A is double the resistance of coil B and center tap, 
and same we have for coil C and counter uh, coil D and D and counter C. Why I tell you this uh, resistor? Because one of the main issue that we have when we want to work with stepper motor is finding the coil pair. Okay, means that in real situation, if you want to run the real stepper motor, you will uh, not be able to do that unless you know the wire and configuration of the wire. There are two methods to finding that. Method number one, which is a little bit <laughs> standard and it's very nice, I can say, is that at the first step, you can give the command to stepper motor and determine the coil pairs. Like this, that you will put the, with the help of multimeter, you will put the plus to one wire and another to uh, other three wires. You should be careful that this resistor between the pins should be less than 10 ohms. If it's less than 10 ohm, it means that that means our page. And if it's more than this, it means that that center tab is come to the picture. And then these are the other uh, firing wire. Remember that this work is based on trial and error. If you don't have the data sheet or any catalog for your uh, stepper motor, or if you don't know the wiring color of your motor. Generally, all people, when they work with motor, stepper motor, they will do the same and they will check the motors based on this method. Another method we have, which uh, if you can find the data sheet of your uh, stepper motor, uh, then we can use some trick like this. Which based on this, uh, suppose for four wire bipolar stepper motors, the only things that we need is that we should find two pairs of wire which are connected each of two coils. One coil is get connected to out one and out two, and the others is uh, connected to out two and four of the polarity, which is not uh, much more important. To find the two wire from one coil, we can have this algorithm or these methods. First, we will try to spin the shaft of the stepper motors by hand and notice how hard it's run. Now pick a random wire from the motor and touch the bare ends together. Next, we will try to spin the shafts of the stepper motors again. And if we feel that lot of resistance, you have found a pair of coins. Anyway, I prefer that you follow the first method, means that finding with the multimeter because it's much more better, which by the finding resistor less than 10 ohm, it's much more uh, better to find. Till now, what I tell you, it's regarding the structure of the stepper motors and wiring. But anyway, whenever you want to buy a stepper motor, you need to know some specification regarding this type of motor. And knowing this specification will help you to select the proper motors based on the real application that you have. First thing that you should know about your stepper motor is the phase which re uh, refers to the grouping of the individual coils in the stepper motor. And stepper motor may have the several coils, but they are wired together and controlled in phase. Two, four, and five phase stepper motors are common. And they will often be phase di diagram included with the stepper motor that indicates the sequence that motor phase are driven in. Next parameter is step angel, which is much more we should think of that in, based on your application. And this is amount of shaft 
of the motor will spin for each individual full step measure in degrees. In some stepper motors, this refers as the stepper re revolution and the um, two figures are just different way of expressing the same things. As an example, a common rating for a stepper motor is 1.8 degree step angle. And as we have the 360 degree in the full rotation, then we can say that this is equivalent to 200 step per revolution. Means if I want to move 360 degree, I should have 200 step per revolution. Um, the next parameter is the voltage, which uh, we should give simply to the coils. But be careful that this is the function of current rating and the coil resistor, and you can use the ohm law to calculate one to the other. Next is current, which you need, and the maximum current is related to your stepper motor's coil. Resistance is the resistance coil. Inductance, holding torque, which how much load you can put on your stepper motor. and uh, the effect, uh, the detent uh, torque, which is the amount of holding torque that can be expected when the motor type of the shaft, which all these points will give you the provision of um, a specification regarding motor that you have. Then the next things that you should know is that after finding the wire A, B, C, suppose, or A1, B1, A2, B2, you should know that if you want to go with the clockwise or anti-clockwise, which wire you should give the voltage and which one you should make off. In the other way, they call it firing sequence. Uh, to rotate the motors, we will have to engage the phase in the set of firing patterns or turning on and off between A1, B1, A2, B2, or B2, A2, B1, A1, like that. It will uh, be different based on the stepper motor wires and sequence of the wire. As we say in Arduino, they try to make the library for so many parts. One part is also stepper motor, as we have something for servo motor. For stepper motor also, they made one nice function that they call it servo.h. And this library allows you to control the unipolar or bipolar stepper motor. To use it, you will need the stepper motor and some hardware to control it. this function have four more uh, parts that we should know and we will review. One is stepper, and one is set stepper, and a step which we are going to review the function here. The first one is syntax of a stepper, or a steps pin one and pin two, or a steps, uh, p steps pin one, pin two, pin three, and pin four which is the function to create the new instance of stepper classes and represent the particular stepper motors attached to your Arduino board. Uh, use it to, at the top of your sketch, above setup and loop. Uh, the number of parameters depend on how you wire your motor, either using two or four pins of the Arduino board. The parameter inside of this first is a step, which will identify the number of steps in one revolution. And suppose in your motor, which they will give you per steps, 360 degrees should be divided by the degree of your motor. Suppose if I have the motor, which have the 3.6 degree, 
we have 100 steps in that. Pin one and pin two, which will be represent in the form of integer, uh, are uh, another parameter for uh, this type of uh, function, which uh, are the two pins that are attached to the motors, pin three and pin four are somehow they are optional, but they are the two pins are attached to uh, motors if your motor have the four pins. What this function will return us, it will return a new instance of a stepper motor class. An example is very simple. A stepper, my stepper is equal to a stepper 100, 5, and 6. It means that I have 100 uh, steps and my stepper motor are connected to pin number 5 and 6. Uh, next function is set a speed which uh, RPMS is the value which we should refer to that. And in this function, we will set the motor speed in rotation per minute or RPMS. This function doesn't make the motor turn, just set the speed at which it will, uh, when you call the step. And the parameter inside of that is RPMS, which is the speed at which the motor should turn in rotation per minute, has a positive number or log. Um, the next function is a stepper steps steps, which in that turns the motor some specific number of steps at the speed determined by the most recent call to at a speed and this function is blocking that it it will wait until the motor has finished the moving to the pass control to the next line in your escape uh, for example if you set the speed to say one rpm and you call the step 100 on a 100 step motor this function will take a full minute to turn for better control keep the speed high and only Go few steps with each call to steps. The parameter here is step, which is number of the step in the positive form. You should turn one direction and negative to the other one. Okay, these are uh, what the first part that really we need to know in Arduino. After finding the wire of the step motor, the next step is that we should know the function of stepper that H. Next part is that how we should use the wire of the stepper motor and interface it into our Arduino. If you have two wire uh, stepper motor, some driver like ULN 2003 or 2004 or 2007 can work fine with you and two wire of control will do the job. But if you have the unipolar ste stepper motors, four wire from Arduino, we should come and help you to move this motor. But as I searched even last night on the net to find much more ways, some, we can say four method to drive the stepper motor we have. First one is that using the ULN 2003 or U2004. Second one is L293D or 298 that we use with DC motor. Another one is that A4988 and DRV825, which is the recent one and last driver that uh, comes for the stepper motor. All of them are applicable, but based on the current that you have regarding your stepper motor, you may use them and based on your um, designer point of view or design point of view, you can use any of these driver. Suppose the first one, which is more famous, 2003, it has the six uh, or seven Darlington transistor inside, which can have the high voltage current 
and it will use in so many zephyr motor types or L293 or 298 as the H bridge that we prefer most of the time to use for DC motors also it can be applicable or A498 which is mainly used in 3D printer or CNC machines or uh, CNC machines are uh, another driver or DRV also they are the more accurate speed and direction stepper motor control anyway what we will talk today uh, really we can say that from now our topic is a start today we will talk just regarding the ULN type is the first one and these three I will talk on Monday uh, for you before um, talking regarding the rest of our lecture, um, let me give you some more information regarding the stepper motors models, two of them which are more demand in labs and also in practical. One is 28BYJ model, which I bring the figure here for you. This uh, type of the stepper motor uh, which is the cheapest uh, stepper motors and you can find it you can find in uh, so many applications um, it's not much more accurate or powerful, but it's great to use for some smaller project. And the motor is often used to automatically adjust the van or air conditioner in um, so many applications. It uh, has some extra torque and uh, reduced the speed also. The specification of this stepper motor I bring for you here you can see that uh, we have five volt coil resistor of 50 ohm it's unipolar and the dimension of the shaft i bring left of the motor and something which is important is that the step angle is 0.1 in full and 0.8 in uh, half movement <clears throat> the type of the motor is also permanent magnet, which is not much more important for us. But something which is important is the color of wire that I show here. Coil 1, coil 2, 5 volt, coil 4, and coil number 2, two and 3, you will see the different color. And uh, how to connect this with ULN, I bring the figure here that you can see. Some ready-made module is available now, and you can even purchase this uh, type of the driver, and you will see that uh, uh, one of the application of this type of stepper motor is in cameras when they were providing the precise control and position. Um, this is, we can say, the excellent control of speed during the rotation. That is why it's used in so many robotic projects and applications. And tilting of card style mirror and some application like this also will happen by this uh, type of the servo motor. I bring the figure here. You can see how simply it will connect. And even if we want to if we, we want to uh, mm, connect this for to the Arduino, uh, it's also simple. You can connect the wire there. That was the one stepper motor type. Another one is NEMA, which uh, it has in various size and type, but some which I bring here for you, NEMA with 200 step 
uh, and uh, it has the 12 volt with 350 milliampere uh, ampere and it has a 1.8 uh, degree um, little bit we can say the coil one and coil two wire are uh, color are uh, fixed and you can have red and yellow wire for coil one and green and brown or gray for the coil number two this has the four wire that you can use it with the 12 volts and it's good in the uh, various application okay um we can have this figure even in the simulation you can use this uh type of the board in Proteus and you can do the simulation job uh, and connect them based on the figure which I show here for you. But if you want to have some fix, uh, suppose uh, pin connection, you can even use this. I and one can go to pin number eight, I and two pin number nine, I and three pin number 10 and pin number 11 for I and four, you should use the logic and power ground together and uh, five volt power supply for the Arduino, uh, for the supply of the motor. Something I want that you should remember is that it's possible to directly power the stepper motor from five volt output of the Arduino. And this, however, is not recommended when the stepper motor drives too much current. This will kill your Arduino board. Then it's preferred that have the extra power for the stepper motor. Okay, well, what I tell you till now, you should remember some first. How we should find the wire of a stepper motor? Coil wire and what is the firing sequence second the type of the stepper motor and degree which we have third how we should connect to arduino how we should connect to arduino we will talk from now to next lecture with the two lecture specifically we just talking on how to connect this to arduino and how to doing the coding meanwhile please remember in arduino they have done very nice job and they make one good library for us which we can use it and they call it uh, stepper.h okay let us continue our topics for today suppose the first example is uh, controlling the 28BYJ stepper motor type, which in that I'm using the library of stepper.h, and I know that the step per revolution is 2000, 2048, means that the number of step per revolution. I have the wiring of pin eight to in one, pin nine to in two, pin 10 in three, and pin 11 and pin 4 to in, uh, in uh, pin 11 to pin in 4. Then in the next library part, I specify the stepper, my stepper as the stepper revolution or 2048 function. These are the pin which I connect to, uh, to Arduino. In the setup, I set the speed of 5 RPM and start the serial communication in that uh, the next part is the loop which in there we will just type the clockwise and then start to rotating clockwise and if i put my step speed minus a step per revolution it will go to the wrong revolution um please remember that uh, this example will give us how we can have the speed of 5 rpm into the clockwise and into the uh, counterclockwise 
movement. In the first part, as you will see, we said that how many steps we should have. As we know, the degree of our Arduin, uh, of our stepper motor is how much? We will divide it by 360, then 2048 will come out from them. Another one is that the RPM that we know, because as we know, the maximum RPM of our stepper motor is 10 to 15 RPM. When we will give it 5 volt, we will find it from data sheet. And in the loop also, it will go to uh, clockwise or counterclockwise movement. Anyway, let's for the next example. This example, again, I'm using uh, the stepper motor and ULN, but I'm using the second type of our stepper motor, means NEMA. And in NEMA 70, I show you how to connect to ULN 2004A. With that same, you can do in Protus and also do the job. But something which is new here, I put one knob, which based on that, I can read the analog voltage. And based on rotation on this, we will rotate the stepper motor. If I have the unipolar, I can use that uh, arrangement. Or if I want to use the bipolar also, you can use the some uh, H-bridge uh, like this. Let us see the motor knob example. In this, we are going to have the stepper motor, which is following the turns of potentiometer on analog input zero. Let us see the program first. I use the library of stepper.h and um, change the number of steps on my motor because I know that this type of motor has 101. Previous one, it has 2048. Don't forget that. Then I use the stepper, stepper, number of step is 100, and arrangement of pin number 8, 9, 10, and 11 to interface to Arduino. Then I have the previous readings of analog inputs. I define it at zero to be sure that there is no noise for that. Next is in the setup, I will say the speed into the 13 RPM because I know that these type of stepper motor have the 13 RPM speed. In the loop part, we have the first, we should read the analog channel value and then we should put this value but we should do like this we should take the difference between current value and previous one okay then that is why we have the val minus previous and then again we will change the previous val to this by this whenever we will move the potentiometer we expect that that our uh, stepper motor moved. That was example number two. Let's go to control the stepper motor speed like this. In this program, we have the unipolar or bipolar. There is no difference, but we know that the motor is attached to pin number eight to 11. And we have again one potentiometer, which is collect to A0 channel. And motor will rotate in counterclockwise direction. The higher put in the higher potentiometer value, and the faster speed of the motor we will have uh, because of set speed parameter. Let us see the code. First, again, I use the library of stepper. Then I said, and then I initialize the pins of eight, nine, eleven, and. 10, then some step count I will put at zero in the setup. Nothing, no need to do anything in the setup, but in the loop, I should read the analog value and then I should map it between zero to 100 as the movement of my uh, stepper motor. Now, if my speed is greater than uh, zero, I will do uh, like this motor speed if and 
if it's greater, we will not do and then uh, not do anything. Then it means that my speed should be greater than zero. Less than zero, I will not do anything. Okay, example number four is the motor control, but one step at the time. It means that we uh, drive a unipolar or bipolar, there is no difference. Same connection, 8 to 11, uh, but we will uh, step one step at a time. Very slowly we should move, or we want to move very carefully one step by uh, one step in this program. Let us see the program. First is library. Second is this step for revolution. Third is that pin configuration. Now for the setup part, uh we can have some serial monitoring if we want and also after that first step is one step we have and then a step count and then we will add this step one by one okay i give you four example here that i want that you also read it and analyze it with yourself and do the simulation please send this example with yesterday lectures on Monday for me uh, and make two different files for each task. That is one. Before I finishing today, let us see some Arduino uh, clips that uh, I want to show you some practical clips regarding the Arduino application. And after that, we can stop. Uh, some make block. Uh, a starter kit is available for Arduino, which based on that you can make uh, your robot. The motor which is, is here is that this is the servo motors. Uh, these are the parts, some sensors, some remote control, some um, you can see uh, ultrasound sensors, motors, IR receiver some remote controller, and so on. Then in that, you can make some robot like this. We can, whenever it will see the object, it can stop. No need to buy this kit directly, but you can have the idea that how it will work, uh, and maybe you can make your own uh, robot based on the Arduino. Now you have some good idea uh, to work with this uh, type of the robot. Um, second thing is that Ardoboy, uh, which is some UAV part, and based on that, you can uh, even make the game. See, this is available, and even code, you can find it on Arduino.cc. Also, you can control some, I don't know, some um, UAVs based on that. And you will see that here they made in Arduino uh, ID. Uh, some 500 grams uh, payload can use with the help of this arm, which is using the servo motors inside. And it can, and stepper motors with encoders that they can do some CNC job, as you will see. This is the application of today lecture, maybe. They can do the painting with the laser. They can do the chess game or and some hobbies and some just work to understand the robotics and <laughs> something like this. It will track the person and based on that, It can work. This camera, they call it Pixie camera. Uh,
<clears throat> then maybe some other job like the, they call it hand gesture or you are studio that they these some of them are maybe you think that these are toys but they are the real application of the robots that you can see in the industry but they will make it simplify for children to learn um, robotics better as you will see here yeah uh, oh bots is also one more robots that you will see here uh, you can make it and program it uh, based on the Arduino. these are the configuration and this is um, one uh, application programming that uh, i have planned to teach you but i don't know that maybe we will not be able to do with this time um, let us see what uh, school will decide maybe i will give you some short course on that the core of all this project was arduino uh, and but in various um, application as you will see suppose this is uh, some um, force measurement system along with suppose um, soldering on 3d printer various uh, application you can see here that people are using the arduino board based on the wi-fi application or based on uh, manual manual uh, uh, controlling okay I wish that today you learned something regarding the stepper motors. We will continue this for the next lecture. Please simulate all the um, tasks here. And uh, uh, also, uh, please uh, send on time uh, for me. If you have any question, we, you can ask me on uh, uh, WeChat groups. And as usual, I will answer you. Uh, I will put and share these uh, lectures also soon on the uh, MOOC. Please follow it on the MOOC. Uh, then uh, we will have the next lecture on, on Monday. Uh, take care. See you. Bye.